This is an Alfa Romeo GTV Spider. It was designed by Enrico Fermier at Pininfarina back in 1988 and it was completed by Centro Stile Alfa Romeo under Walter De Silva who, who you may remember also designed the 156, another one of my favourite cars. Now the production of the GTV didn't start until late 1993 so the car had a five year long gestation period. That's twice as long as an elephant. So the first cars to be built were, were all V6 Spiders for the 1994 Paris Motor Show. But uh, you had to wait until after the Geneva Motor Show in March 1995 before you could actually buy a GTV. Wow, Alpha really didn't want to rush into this, did they? Should we take a quick look at what makes these cars special? Let's go. The GTV won 10 prestigious international awards, including the world's most beautiful automobile and car of the year. And it was a commercial success with almost 80,000 examples being built in total. Now in 2002, this three litre V6 Spider cost 28,000 pounds, which is the equivalent of around 45,000 quid today, which made it quite an expensive car to buy. For a two-seater sports car, it was also quite heavy at 1,420 kilos. If you compare it to a 2002 Mazda MX-5, that weighed just 1,065 kilos. It's like having two rather large people in the car with you. Of course, some of this weight is due to the most attractive feature of the Spider, the rightly famous 3-litre 24-valve V6 Busso engine which Alfa Romeo's engineers literally shoehorned into the tiny engine bay. This V6 was first developed in the early 70s by Giuseppe Busso, a self-taught but brilliant engineer. And the first modern version of the engine to use double overhead camshafts was in the 1993 Alfa 164. And the way this engine sounds helped to define the legendary image of sporting Alphas from the 1970s, right up to the mid 2000s. It's simply epic. This engine was developed and improved until the end of its life in 2005, when its production ceased due to the inevitable increasing demands of emissions. And in a sad but pretty poetic conclusion, Giuseppe Busso died just a few days after the last example of his fabulous V6 was built at the Arese plant in Milan. Soft tops can be either manual or electrically operated, and they fold away neatly underneath a clamshell type rear cover, making the spider look beautifully streamlined to the top down. Considering that the GTV is actually front-wheel drive, how does it feel behind the wheel? Developed from the Fiat Tipo platform but with all-new rear multi-link suspension, rumour has it that Alfa actually used the superb handling Lotus M100 Elan as their benchmark during development of the GTV chassis.
the lighter four-cylinder twin-spark engine cars seem to have more balanced handling, although the understeer which plagued the heavier V6 can be almost eradicated with some relatively simple tweaks to the suspension. Things like a stiffer rear anti-roll bar and lower or stiffer springs. So, if you're considering buying a GTV, I'd probably advise that you budget for some suspension refreshing, as the complexity makes this a common area for wear and tear on this car. However, a GTV with good suspension and tyres handles really well, and it can give many a more modern sports car a scare on a fast piece of road, um, but not this car, obviously. The stylish interior is classic Alfa Romeo, with leather Momo seats, cowled instruments angled towards the driver, and plenty of adjustment of the seat and steering wheel, which makes the chimpanzee driving position of older Alphas a thing of the past. I beg your pardon? The Spyder is comfortable and surprisingly civilised as a daily car, with a usable boot and some interior cubby holes, unlike the 4C I drove recently, which would struggle to stow a pair of Gucci shades. I don't know about you, but I think the unusual rear end with a one-piece light bar reminds me of Gort, the robot from the day the Earth stood still. GTV and Spider are great looking cars in my opinion, and now that a significant number of years have passed since they first appeared, I think it's pretty clear that the days of picking up a good car for peanuts is definitely over. The grand old tradition of all Alphas appreciating in value eventually is now in full effect, and good examples have been quietly rising in value. V6 Spiders like this one are now getting in the same ballpark as 156 and 147 GTAs, and they're heading for the £10,000 mark. If you want one, you better move fast because there aren't many good ones left out there. And I'm not selling mine. <laughs>